Draw me closer.
if the message this morning begins to feel as though it is anything other than an encouragement and a blessing that you, I, I encourage you, I implore you to rebuke the enemy, the adversary that speaks and attempts to speak in our ear to miss God and misdirect us. Because although the tone and the tenor of this message will be uh, quite strong, and it for and by all means is an enrich to those that are in the body, to those that believe. Our responsibility and our job is to be individuals that are the light of the world, the salt of the earth, and that spread the good news, the gospel of the Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. But sometimes it is imperative that the Holy Spirit speaks and takes and allows us to take inventory within the body of the Christ because we play an all too critical and a very, very important role in the future of the world and in the persistence of life itself. So irrespective of how this reaches you or grasps you today. Somebody has said, all right, I, I've heard him say this before. I'm already getting ready to log off. No, you need to hang in there because this is definitely something for our lives. I know as such because this message was very personal and this message hit you all shepherd hard before the instruction came to Shepherd man via the Holy Spirit to pour out to the body. Amen. Praise the Most High. So we all are going to begin the way that we begin traditionally at Exactly Truth Ministries on Saturday Sabbath. We hold up the Holy Writ. Grab your writ and hold it up. Why? In faith. Because it contains words of the Most High and words that were left on record for our learning. So we hold it up symbolically because we look to it and not down to our own understanding. Scriptures teach us that we ought to look into the hills from which come of our help. Our help coming from the Most High that have made the heavens and the earth. And if you would please join me, uh, we are going to derive the foundation basis for our message and our text this morning. First, from the Hebrew book of Jonah. Jonah chapter one, verses one through 16. And if you have the capability, join us in the New International Version of the English translation of Jonah chapter one. And then we're going to conclude the reading of our text out of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, NIV as well. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ, beloved, and it reads as thus. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. First of all, how y'all doing? appreciate you all. Uh, it's a blessing once again to see you and I pray that you're well. It's our hope and prayer that you would prosper and that you would be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen. Let us continue. Jonah 1 and 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria at that period of time and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Sounds like a similar call to you and I in this day and time. Irrespective of what you think about yourself, if you are saved, if you have procured the free gift of salvation through grace, irrespective of how he has gifted and talented you, we have a centralized job that is similar to each and every one of us. He may use us in a different capacity based upon our talents and gifts, but nonetheless, it is the same administration or distribution, rather, of that job and that call, which is to spread the good news, to light up this world, to preach the gospel. Can you concur? Yeah. So, just as Jonah, the son of Amittai, received a word to go out because Mama Womack, the world is evil and they need your light. 
My, that was approximately, probably about 3,500 years ago, according to history. And the message that he is giving his children, Auntie Val, is the same thing. It, you, you don't have to be me. That's one of the things that I want to arrest right now. You know, you can open up a restaurant. You can open up a juice bar. Hello, someone. You can be someone that is a massage therapist, but he wants to get in and use you irrespective of what your gift and talent is. And don't get it twisted. Your job is the light of this world. So, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord, another thing that sounds familiar, and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Lord have mercy. For then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Five, all the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. We're talking about the world here. The world is represented in the population of the ship, the ship going in the wrong direction with regard to the call of Jonah. Y'all keep up, amen? amen? And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship in hopes, I'm adding this, that they would grant, and it would grant them greater buoyancy to be able to remain afloat. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep in the middle of chaos. Here is the man of the Most High God of, the is of Israel, the man of faith, sleeping in a dangerous time. I know y'all don't know nothing about it because y'all woke today. Somebody pray for me. This is a word that, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it's not going to be easy to deliver because I've already been through the whooping that some of y'all feel like y'all getting ready to obtain. I want to let you know if anybody feels like that this is personal, if it is a veiled double entendre of some sorts, if somehow we're being spiritually passive aggressive, we're not, this is in reaching. This is talking to the entire body of Christ today, even if you can swear you're obedient. I don't want you to feel thrown off the horn because the Most High took a great whipping to his shepherd before it was time for me to turn it over to you all. So if anybody feels like, wow, shepherd man, I can relate. Let's return to scripture. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. Six, the captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. We call him on ours after, after all. I added that. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. All hands on deck, in other words. Amen. Then the sailors said to each other, come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. First, niece Janae, they prayed to their gods. When they didn't get an answer from them gods, it must be somebody's fault. How many people can relate to that? Some of y'all are trying to act like y'all got seven Holy Ghosts, but we know that in situations and scenarios where we seem like Minister Davis, we couldn't outrun the trouble after it seemed like God. Now, I, now he, he don't come when you want him, but I can testify he's right on time. But if that timetable does not meet with your timetable, irrespective of what it is, whether you're seeking a blessing, whether you're seeking a cure, Oftentimes our prayers will become diminutive and they will ultimately diminish to the point of blame. Somebody is at fault for why we get ready to die, Layla. We need to see if we can find out. Are y'all still here? So they asked him, tell us who is responsible. Verse 8, for making all this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Asking. Jonah. Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? Let me backtrack because I don't want to skip something important. And sailors 7 said to each other, come let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So, nephew Devon, I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, son, nephew, he got a strange hybrid in our family. <laughs> what, what, what ended up happening, nephew, was they literally put tickets, almost like a self-made lottery in a hat, and drew lots, and just so happened that the man of God's name came out of the hat. Let me tell you something. When you're somewhere you ain't supposed to be, you can't hide. Let me continue. 
So a, they asked him, tell us who was responsible for making all this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? Let me tell y'all something. When you're not acclimated and made for this world because you've been called to a purpose, you may actually be able to go among singers and sing the best. They still don't know that you ain't that kind of singer. You out here trying to gyrate your hips. Are you praying for me, cousin Vanessa? You praying for me, cousin Joe? You out here trying to gyrate your hips and act like you're the second couple of Elvis, but there's still something a little gospely about what you. Your R and B ain't right. I know you cussed during the song, but I just didn't feel it. Because we're a peculiar people. We're a royal priesthood, and you do not belong where you don't belong. I hope somebody came here to receive a word today. I'm almost done with this reading. Yeah, where did you come from? <laughs> Jonah answered, nine, I am a Hebrew, man, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them, and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord. Somebody repeat with me in faith. They knew he was running away from the Lord. Say, they knew he was running away from the Lord. They knew some of y'all don't want to repeat it because it's what you're doing right now. They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. And so they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Let me let you know something. We're friends of the Most High God of the Hebrews, and he's our friend. We narrowly between that have friends. Don't you think these people are not going to throw you back into the sea to save their own life? Oh, man, there's messages within the way and I didn't get through the Holy Writ. But I'm telling y'all, these are disclosures that we need to hear. The sea was getting rougher, 11. So they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? 12, pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. 13, instead, the men did their best to roll back the land. But they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. You know what they were getting ready to do, right? It's no different than Pontius Pilate. They was trying, Secretary Davis, to, to wash, you know, what they had to do from their hands. But, Lord, please don't let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man for you. Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. You know why it grew calm? You know why the Most High wasn't going to hold it against him? Because he wasn't an innocent man. It's quiet. Isn't that quiet or lie? <laughs> At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord. The Most High God of the Hebrews. I added that, and they offered a sacrifice to him and made vows to him. Amen? Now, you don't need to turn, but encapsulate it in your notes, if you will, and then we're going to reveal the text for this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, I have it right here in IV states, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you? whom you have received from God. You are not your own. I already, I prepared before I came in. That's why I was running a little behind, forgive me, but I'm already prepared to preach this by myself with no help. Because I didn't have much to say when the message came to me. I believe a great reset, preparing for that great outpouring and revival is coming and he's gonna utilize us, beloved. But not before we hear this message today. Now y'all are bold, and I thank the most high for y'all because we teased it on Wednesday and you could have came up with an excuse not to come. But you're here, so you might as well listen, amen? amen. Do you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies, beloved for the remaining time that has been allotted to me to speak to you today concerning the riches of his truth. The title of our text is simply titled Collateral Damage. I'm going to 
look each and every one of you all in the face and stand flat-footed today, 12 toes down, 12 10 toes, forgive me. They done gave me an extra toe for this message on each foot. I think I'm a need Extra. Madam Brown. Ten toes down, Lord Jesus. What type of hot, what type of hybrid is speaking to us this morning? I'm going to look you all in the face. To tell you the truth because I love you. As well as the fact that I can relate because I've been where many of you all are this very day. Don't pull out your set of Holy Ghosts now. Just sit right there and receive this. You don't belong to you. Right. Now, the thing that's interesting is, I believe each and every one of you all realize this somewhat. And you've realized this fact and this principle for a while now. I know you're going to have some kind of inkling because either online in that precious, exact and truth landscape of people, irrespective of where their membership lies, or even those of you all who are signed on tithe paying faithful members of Exact and Truth Ministries to subscribe to a narrative and a curriculum like this, you gotta have some kind of inkling of how the Most High calls out his elect. Yeah, so that you don't have to keep telling one another and run the risk of being accused of being narcissistic, I'll tell you for you, you special. There's something different about you. May be nobody following you right now. You may not feel like that you're having a proper impact on anyone's life right now. You may not even be online. For some of y'all, that's good. Because it ain't nothing but toxicity on there anyway. But irrespective of how you may be comporting yourself this morning, you know you called. And there's nothing like suppressing the Holy Ghost in your belly. It's one of the reasons why life is so difficult. Now, I'm going off on the text, but I'm going to get back to it because I want to relate with people who look just like Shelly Bang. You think I'm talking at you. This thing talked directly to me this morning. Holy Spirit asked me before the giving of this title of this text message, who do you think you are? Carrying me, suppressing me, suppressing aspects of what I've called you to do. And you look at that world and you see the condition that the world is in. When in many aspects of it, you have the antidote. But he said, and I want y'all to hear intently, I'm gonna try to stay to the text, because it's a lot of text, but I don't wanna hold y'all longer than the Holy Ghost says. But he says, despite the admonition to you, this message is not about you ultimately this morning. Our choices has created a collateral damage that if we don't act to reverse, we're not going to even survive in the world that we help to cause. Wow. Wow. Were y'all paying attention when we read Jonah just now? All right, let me continue. Some of you have known what you've been called to longer than others. But because you've been ready to fully embrace, let me make sure I got this right, but because you have not been ready to fully embrace the assignment given to you when the Heavenly Father told you to step out on your own and assigned you a solo mission. Because contrary to many of you all's belief this morning about yourselves, you have gone through the necessary training process because the Most High will not send out or release a vessel. We've taught this prior to fulfill his purpose without first being equipped. We live through the word. So remember, even the singularly talented servant in the Christ parable about the talents had at least one talent. So you are not waiting for the Most High to equip you. Oh, y'all equipped. You're equipped enough to when he gives you an assignment to go. Thank y'all for the boldness to be able. I guess it hadn't hit that bad yet. Some of y'all still saying amen. Y'all still saying truth. Thank you for not leaving me all by myself. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Y'all think this is about ultimately this church, maybe. Or ministry as a whole, maybe. No. 
Just as he talked to me individually, he's talking to you. Where did he tell you to go that you didn't go yet? What has he told you to do that you haven't done yet? What has he given you a due portion of to use where he's sending you? And you have yet to deliver that portion to where he sent you. Some of you all have a praise on your lips. You try to do it here. I'm not trying to run off anybody from, see, we've got to open up my mom, Womack, our understanding. Nobody trying to run y'all off from a fellowship. I'm telling you, you got a praise on your lips. But if that praise belongs in a different country, for instance, that's why the praise don't come across the way you want it here. Minstrels in the house, you've got a musicianship that he's called to a next level. I'm not throwing off. I told y'all this is for everybody today. We in reaching. He's got a musicianship, for example, that he's called to go to a next level. Not a next level in skill. You've got a sound that's different than what's out there. But it doesn't have the impact to keep you encouraged where you are because where you are has it encased. And it is the literal embodiment of you suppressing that sound. Let me continue. So, he's, a, he's, he's as a solo act, called us to various different things to embark upon. And we decided, no, I'm not doing that. So, the world around you, which is largely ignorant to your assignment, I don't want to get ahead of myself again. Father told you to step out so long. You've gone through the training process. You're equipped to at least to say amen. Remember the singularly talented servant received at least one talent. Amen? Yeah. So he doesn't send someone out ill equipped. So you feel justified, however, in your attitude and current standing regarding your faith nonetheless because despite what he has given you, despite what he has shown you, despite what he is telling you, don't look at me like that, y'all. I can relate. You don't feel like it's enough. You don't feel like that it's adequate. So, your stance of suppression is justified because I'm not ready or you have not given me the adequate means to be able to do what you claim you've called me to do. Now, here's the problem. The world around you, which is largely ignorant to your assignment. Did those people on that boat know what Jonah was called to do before they entered the pond and happened upon the storm? Right. He was just another ticket holder. Are right. oh, we going somewhere with this? Some of y'all already uncomfortable. That's cool. So am I. The world around you which is largely ignorant to your assignment, is offering you support and how you feel with many of the improper choices that you're currently making. So when he called you to open up a local parish, for example, and to pastor a church, Big Billy, I'm not saying that he called you to do that. Don't get scared, bro. I like your purple bags. I, I just believe in relating to the people that I'm looking at, so don't y'all get scared. I'm not saying that he's not either, but I'm just saying so when he called you to open up a church parish and you open up a club, the people, Mark, that's going to go there to party, they say, hey, it's another club. Yo! They, they, they totally whip your choices and decisions because they don't know that you was called to minister to them rather than to party with them. Oh, I'm speaking to somebody here today. The world is totally cool. They didn't refuse Minister Green his ticket to Tarshish. They said, where are you going, bro? Where's this boat going? It's going to Tarshish. Well, did you pay your fare? Well, get on board. It's a party bus boat. I mean, I'm sorry. The world around you, which is largely ignorant to your assignment, is offering you support in how you feel with many of the improper choices that you're currently making, but the world doesn't know any better because you haven't approached the world with his light first. You've approached the world with your current desires and agenda. And it's placing the entire world at risk. Listen, because just as the Christ taught in his sermon on the mount in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13, this 
We're taking from the English Standard Version of the English translation of Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. I'm declaring today, before y'all say good, because that's how I feel, that is not your destiny today. Oh, somebody should have got excited about that word. Irrespective of how you feel about yourself and how it has shaped your outlook on this world, called man or woman of the Most High God of the Hebrews, you are the salt of the earth. And you, and it is not your destiny to be trampled under men's feet. Amen. There's a message he called me to preach. We're going to preach it one day. When he, when he tells us to release it, it's called spiritual suicide. I come against it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It will not take place in your lives, I declare. But somebody is trying today. Let us continue. Meat is an essential. Don't get ahead of yourself. You are the salt of the earth. One of the earliest usage and uses in the discovery of salt was the preservation of food, particularly meat. Meat is an essential dietary component because it is one of the most concentrated proteins for the Calvin, and protein adds in the building of what? Of muscle and muscle definition. And muscles provide strength and agility to the body. So let me ask you a question. If we are refusing to distribute the muscle and the protein and the meat for the body of this world, how is it supposed to be strong? Wow. Hmm. Obviously, food is essential to the survival of life and the spiritual food of our Heavenly Father is exacting truth. Trying to promote this ministry because this ministry is not a name. It's a duty. His exact truth is not being preserved as it should be today. Right. Beloved, there is a fugitive spirit. Now we're getting somewhere interesting. Y'all stay awake. I won't be before you long. There is a fugitive spirit running rampant amidst the body of the Christ today. A fugitive, as defined in the English lexicon, is a person who has created, who has escaped from a place where it's hiding, especially to avoid being placed in custody. Well, I'm not a criminal. Why am I being placed in custody? You're in custody because you're not your own. We just read it in Corinthians. Oh, you don't have to say it, man. It's okay. I, I totally understand the disposition and the standpoint because I look but I am like a doe too. I thought I was doing your will. Holy Spirit said, you know where you're not doing my will. I'm a man of faith. Holy Spirit said to y'all, Pastor, you know where you're not exercising complete trust and faith. Thought I was being obedient. Minister Mark Davis was like Wednesday. You know when I told you that when they wouldn't receive our vow to, before leaving that place, don't leave with the discouragement of what they got to carry. Remove the dust off your feet. You know when you left them with a choice, stupid. Dumb and that helped you walk away from what you felt like was ignorance and rejection of the truth that you came to bring that period of time. He said, you know where you're guilty. I said, Holy Spirit, forgive me, you're correct. I hope y'all can do the same. There is a fugitive spirit running rampant in the body of Christ today. A fugitive of faith is a particularly dangerous mind frame to stop. It's very difficult, almost impossible to reel in, Sister Janine, or to apprehend because it feels justified in its self-serving outlook. And the largely naive world is assisting the faith fugitives flight from faith duty and responsibility, unbeknownst to the fact that first and foremost, the fugitive is a carrier, Lady Joy, of important information to their future existence as well. They literally harboring, harboring a criminal where they don't realize that part of what the fugitive is storing away belongs to them. And they're giving shelter to the fugitive. Now this is placing the people of the world in jeopardy. 
Because the faith fugitive is not properly ministering to the world's needs. Now, can I take a moment to digress for a second? Y'all yeah. look at the body of Christ and y'all look at the world today. And not everyone, but in a macro sense, is the church, as we call it, meeting the needs of the world? No. I need somebody to be honest today. No. Well, some of y'all are like, ain't up to me. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You sound just like a future man. The faith fugitive is not properly ministering to the world's needs and the world believes it is actually being beneficial to the fugitive by helping them run with what they are carrying, not realizing that it is putting everything and everyone around them in grave danger. Listen, I'm here today under the auspices of the Holy Spirit to tell every faith fugitive today that you know who you are as well as to share this message from the Holy Spirit. But you know what so many people's spirit is retorting? Now don't accept it if it's not you. Because it's two things. It can either be in your spirit or it could be Satan, the adversary, speaking in your ear, hoping that you will adopt this narrative. Stop feeling sorry for yourselves because the real damage is in the collateral damage that is being caused by your refusal to salt the earth. If anybody feels like that the world is becoming hard to live in, part of that is our fault. Now, mind you, this world got to come to an end, but not before we do our duty. And that, in fact, beloved, is what's making things so difficult. Because the world is rushing towards its end, but it's being slowed by the lack of the distribution of the gospel and light putting the elect at jeopardy as was ministered in Matthew 24. Wow. But I've been holding up pretty good until now, but you don't have forever. And Satan is just getting started. Let me continue. The most high's life-saving spiritual food is not effectively reaching the world because you're in protest of something you believe that you need. Oh, man. Or that you desire, or that was done or adversely affected you in past or in times past. Pick one. Well, I got everything I need, but I ain't trying to go back there. Who said we should have to go back there? Sometimes there was a message he gave us in the window. Sometimes you just got to be glad that you escaped. Y'all know some people are stuck calling down and on spirits and tearing for a Holy Ghost that's never going to come in the way in the fashion that they've been shown and instructed. You actually escaped from foolishness and you've got the audacity to still act like you've been. <laughs> yeah, that's Come on with it. Oh, I'm going to continue. So pick one. You're in protest because you don't believe that you receive what you need. Or you don't believe, believe or you are not happy or satisfied because you haven't Obtain what you desire. Or you feel like that you still haven't gotten over what was done to you or what adversely affected you. When you know good and well that the Christ went on record thousands of years ago telling his followers in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 25, therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life. We live through the word. All right, I'm not saying that you don't have a point or an issue, but what your grievance is should not be taken up between you and I. You are to recognize that he knows what you need. Right. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body what ye shall put on is not the life more than the meat and the body more than the raiment. Yeah, but I'm back on my taxes. Is not the life more than the meat and the body and the raiment. Yeah. But I'm lonely is not life more than the meat of the body. Yeah, but the closest one to me, I can't stand because they never listen to me. Is not your grievance is not to be taken up with me nor mine yours. Right. The Father knows what you need. Where is your trust of right. him? Right. 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 Then on top of that, the thing that he's placed in your hand, let's visit past messages, minister Billy. 
minister better. Yeah, minister better. You're ministering in the gospel of Saul, so you're a minister nonetheless. I'm not saying that he was rejecting the notion of what I'm saying. I just didn't like the look on my cousin's face when I turned around and called him a minister. <laughs> so say you do have a need. I'm progressing towards the end. Take the rod that was in your hand because I'm telling you it wasn't for Moses to get with the Israelites in fear or to cower and return to Egypt. He said, stop talking to me and look and do something with that rod that's in your hand. He's placed a rod in your hand. Let me ask you a question. What are you doing with it? Yeah. Besides complaining and acting like a holdout because you don't like the circumstance you're in. The rod was given to him because if you don't like the circumstance you're in, change it. Tap the water at the base of the shoreline and cause the walls of water to stand so you can move through it. Where is your faith today? But rather than tapping water and causing it to stand, we'd rather create victims unbeknownst to them themselves. Don't even know that they're collateral damage of the dispute that we got with the Heavenly Father. Not even privy to it, mostly until it's too late. I swear that so many people in our lives, if they knew the call that was on you, before entering into improper relationship with you, I don't care if it's a friendship, a job, or whatever, I swear to you, they would curse you and run from you if they knew ahead of time. <laughs> if they knew that you was going to bring that trouble in close proximity to me, only to disobey him, I'd have never had nothing to do with you. Some of y'all think I'm talking about your significant other. I'm talking to some of y'all about y'all children. If I knew that you were going to birth me out, only to reject what he called you to do and the imposition it was going to have on my life, I'd have, I'd have disowned you from the, from, from the very birth. <laughs> Make me an orphan before you deny his will wow. and call me, your, my, call me my father or mother. He never called any of us to be excellent. Find that in scripture in any translation. You ain't going to find a scripture that says be ye excellent. He said, be perfect. Go back to the hermeneutics of it, to the etymology of it. It means finish the task. That's why in Matthew 5, in the final verse of that chapter, when he said, your heaven, heavenly father is perfect, I'm expecting you to be perfect. He said, because everything he said he was going to do, he did. Now you do what you're supposed to do. Right. And here we are, so refusing to do it. Right. Stop acting like everything Shepherd Man is talking about today equivocates to you going knocking on somebody's door like a Jehovah's Witness. We love to cover it in a way that's impossible so that we don't have to do it. You know what you're equipped to do. Some of it is looking in the mirror and speaking truth to your own self. Oh, this is going to stay because I've done it myself. By the time we get done running from God, we're going to have spent tens of thousands of dollars on counsel never to listen to anything that nobody said. You're right. Let me continue with the text. I'm, I am, divine, I'm watching the, the clock. I don't want to be up here too long because long enough in that somebody might storm with a hammer. I told y'all I got hit first. That don't, that don't help, okay. I'm going to continue. It don't matter that you got hit first. <sighs> you may feel as though you have some fairly justifiable reasons why you haven't obediently embarked upon your personal mission to Nineveh to speak the message to the world of the Gentiles. Gentiles means nations other than the Israelites. That's the world in essence. That your heavenly father has instructed you to speak to them. Yeah, guess what? So did John. Yeah, he felt justified too. Now why would I go do that to those people when they got your people captive right now as we speak? What make you think, now this conversation is with the Holy Ghost. What make you think that they don't even know their law of the let me in the city to open my mouth when they see that I'm a Hebrew Israelite prophet? That don't make no sense. So guess what, I'm not going, Janine. And that's exactly what y'all, thinking that you're better than Jonah in scripture, have told the Holy Ghost in your real life. Well, Tell me I'm lying. You can, but you'll be lying. Yeah, you feel like you got some legitimate excuses for why you haven't gone to Nineveh. But like it or not, agree with it or not, none of the excuses that you can present is a justifiable reason. I'm speaking to y'all online too as well, those who are still here. 
It's not a justifiable reason and not serving as the preservation for his food to the earth, meaning the salt of the earth, and not serving as the salt of the earth. But I've been legitimately hurt and damaged in these churches. No, 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 no. How are you going to speak in tongues after saying that? It's still not an excuse to withhold the preservation of food meant to feed the starving world. After all, what does the starving world got to do with your church hurt? They ain't even in the church yet to be hurt. Oh, I'm teaching today. I'm just going to say it. But I've been mishandled by folk that I believed were called to lead in struggle. The sniffing wasn't in my notes. I did that. Subsequently, it caused me to somewhat mislead folks that depended on me. I should have never listened to folks that I listened to. And so because I listened to them, my, my, my friends and my family, my children and my spouses, they listened to me and all of us are in a mess. What about that? That very well may be true. But it doesn't erase the truth that you know. And it does not exempt you from the mission that he has called you to embark upon first as the salt of the earth. So say you've been separated from the wrongs of your past. That's a blessing. Say you've been freed from tyrannical leaders and people who had objectives and agendas that wasn't the heart of the most high and has left you all by yourself. Now what's your excuse? Be ye therefore strong. I mean, you ain't got nothing to hold you back now. Well, do you have a ticket? I want one. I haven't received one yet. I've tried to. I told y'all this message came to me first. I want a ticket that allows you to pout and to moan and to complain for the duration of your life and still make it to glory, not fulfilling the assignment because you got a past with folk who don't. Now, let me ask you this question. Just look at where we are standing today. We in Pride Month. I'm not trying to say nothing wrong with the people that celebrate Pride Month. They the main people that need us. But I tell you what, you ain't been called to be the general on one of the floats at the Pride Festival. You've been called to something bigger than that. You've been called to be the light to this world. Some of y'all trying to hide, and I'm saying now. That's why he gave me to say it. You're actually trying to hide at the Pride Festival. The people that's taking pride on stuff that's really to tell the truth, they feel shame. Right. Right. Oh, can I just teach and get yeah. I'm not trying to condemn you. Nobody, all have sinned and come short. But what I'm telling y'all, if y'all believe that mess, then you're more naive than what I thought. Don't people at the pride parade know you don't belong there? That doesn't seem as though your hoorah is genuine. Is it something that matters? <laughs> you said that you wanted to take the lead. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right song. <laughs> and it's raining men. <laughs> but girlfriend, I don't feel the conviction coming from you. Is there some other place that you'd rather be? <laughs> yeah, the people taking pride in their festival, they know you don't belong there. Right. At least not in the role or the capacity that you're there. And I'm not saying that you should be there spitting vitriol at them on the side with a sign. Right, right, right. <laughs> Beloved, please do not take Shepherd Man wrong today. Yes, we've been released from largely dogmatic points of view. We've been freed from improper teaching. I'm not telling you that we need to go back to that. I'm not exclaiming that, you know, get friendly with the neighbor next to you because we ain't leaving here for a month. No, we're not going back to cultish ways. That's not what this message is about. This message is individual. If you make it collective, that gives you a way to escape. Sure. We've ceased from improper practice of shunning sinners. I hope y'all have. Right. When we're all sinners, before the grace of the Most High God of the Hebrews, of course we've encouraged the Christ body 
to set down the act of judging others because that simply isn't our duty or responsibility, it's his. That's allowed us to have a relationship, some of us that come from terse dogma to fall in love with our children and our family members again without impunity. Nobody's saying today this message is not about returning back to what's incorrect. I just want to say that because the enemy may be saying that he's trying to take y'all back to 1219. I, I swear Pastor Sweet ain't giving up the building even if we want. But none of that has changed the telling of the truth. Why well, y'all not saying amen? amen? So you're able to heal and to commune. Some of y'all might feel like, is he talking about me? Not yes, but I'm talking about everybody else too. Nobody escapes. So you're able to heal the relationship with your family members that felt like that you was a radical cultist. But somehow, how they become pastors? No, it wasn't for you to adopt the darkness that they're in. It's for you to heal, but you're still alive. Right. The truth is still the truth. What's right is still right. Amen. Amen. I'm a dragon homogeneous cross painter. I don't even know what that means. I'm on members. I don't even know what that means. I know like the different words separately, but they, and they don't make no sense together. But that's where the world is going. And the truth in you is still the truth. It's not for you to be, how do you look at the homogeneous cross, whatever I just said, at their church? How they is if I some of everything is out there, I'm fine, I'm fine. Look, sing to me, how great. How you look there with your knowledge? Look, admittedly so, I'm going to throw Bishop under the bus. Bishop and his son, Pastor Man, all the way down to his son. I don't know who he think he is, but he a little junior bishop now. They admitted at times they wasn't right. So how great? That's exactly where some of y'all at right now. Right there in that space, acting like you don't know what you know. Right, right, right. Mm -mm, don't do that. That's, that's intolerable. Sitting up knowing better. But just saying, carry on. That's what, that's what Jonah did. Oh, we teach it today. I'm almost done. You said that a half hour ago. Believe me. Because this, I'm going to call him a Negro. This, some of y'all believe that anyway. This dude was in the bottom of the, bottom of the boat sleep when chaos was on. People screaming, running. And he, <laughs> we done found a way to be comfortable ignoring our call. Well, I'm preaching to somebody I'm today. preaching. I'm preaching. So we just wanted to be clear. We're called for a world that's in chaos like this, but we're letting the chaos pastor us. And that ain't right. right. None of that has changed the telling of the truth and spreading the good news of the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach or living free from the condemnation of sin and walking in abundance. There is collateral damage of immeasurable calculation being created by folks with a heavenly call on their lives that are running from their call or misprioritizing their call altogether. I know this to be true, particularly because many of us that are current fugitives of faith are actually the collateral damage of prior fugitives of faith that ran before us. Yeah. You don't have to look down on yourself today. There's grace for you today. You know why? Because your daddy was Jonah. Yeah, you, you Jonah the third because your granddaddy was Jonah. No, we didn't just, my mom, that create this fugitive thing. We come from a long line of people that ran. This morning, I'm going to leave you with three distinct ways in which the disobedience of the call of the Most High have created collateral damage in the area. Because we need to know the damage that we've done. If we have any hopes of having a conscience to reverse and fix what the church has done. Right. Y'all think somebody stealing your ties and going getting the Mercedes was the worst thing that could be done. No, the people actually carrying the truth, Janae. 
and for a moment living by it and swearing by it. But taking their hands off of the plow is far worse than somebody that never was a representative of his in the first place. Y'all need to get over charlatans he never called them. How many people are still not glad when he removed Saul from king because he wasn't David? That's a word. You're actually living under David's kingship when he was the rightful heir, acting like Saul still on the throne. It's well on time. I, I haven't stole nothing from y'all. This is hitting somebody. The first, there's three. And then we're going to pray and say amen. Hopefully, the first is the innocent bystander. This has already been covered in the reading of our opening text, so I don't have to go over it. Regarding everybody on the boat to Tarshish that was simply going about their day and minding their business before Jonah, the fugitive of his own faith and divine call, gathered in that boat with him. People are entering into relationships with us, going into business with us. Let me stay, let me stay on the relationship thing with y'all, because some of y'all feel justified. You're a fugitive. You're on the run from the Holy Ghost custody. And people are getting into all manners of relationships right. with us. Some of y'all don't want to say it. Don't want me to say it. I don't say it. I ain't scared. People are entering into relationships with us, going into business with us, traveling and going on excursions, Minister Davis, with us. Why you got to call my name? <laughs> traveling and going, because some of us travel. Going on excursions with us without a proper understanding of who we are mm. or what we've been called to say and do, even regarding their lives. They are relating with us. They are traveling with us. They are going on sojourns with us and have no idea who we are. Right. Only ultimately in the end, because of our own flight from justice, themselves to become innocent bystanders of whatever judgment hits us. Because let me promise you all something. Cousin Joe, if they didn't get Jonah off that boat, every single one of them would go drown. So it shows the grace of the Most High because he doesn't, cousin Vanessa, next to your husband, judge the ignorant improperly, which is why they had to get Jonah off that boat because he wasn't gonna allow those people to perish under the guise and auspices of what Jonah was running from. Who in your car you didn't told them, tell them that you had a prophecy for their life? Oh, y'all not gonna make this about me today because when this message came to me, I was in a I was in a bathroom mostly all by myself. I don't know why he uses me in the bathroom. So you're not going to implicate me or all of exacting truth. The way you feel like you're in a room by yourself is exactly how you're supposed to feel. Who did he give a word to? For you first, and you trying to kiss them. <laughs> Just when I thought that exactly my truth ministries wasn't including these type of messages no more. <laughs> Notice that I didn't say that it wasn't for you to eventually kiss them. He just got something for you to tell them first. Right. Now, it may sway their desire to want to kiss you. Right. <laughs> but how I've been done and how I've been made to feel, I don't feel like that, that disclosure is necessary. You're going to harbor that person with all of the implication that's on your life and not tell them the truth about who you actually are. They're yeah, innocent bystander. I believe it was possible people would be ripping judgment up. Did it all right there? I'm a killer. No, see, that's why it's so important for judgment to be separate. Because y'all would be crossing the lines of judgment, shooting one another, shooting at the club. Man, like we said prior, it was a word. If, if our children, if I knew you was going to run from what your call was, I wouldn't even associate with this family. 
It's more trouble than what it's worth. All right, let me get that. Second, that means there's two more, is a process that we will call today collateral, uh, in, collateral in the collateral damage message. The second one is by means of unjustified justifications. Is somebody praying for me? 1153. I, I, my intention is to be done by 12. Unjustified justifications. When you temper and gauge your convictions based upon the comparisons of the world around you. Meaning only what you see all around you is what you use to drive the motivation and intensity level of your response and obedience to the call of the Most High and your faith. Let me make it even simpler. How many anybody believes like this anymore so I don't have to do it? Unjustified justifications. Hardly anybody practices these tenets anymore, so I don't have to do it. Nobody go to church on Monday no more. Neither do we. But I'm just saying that our lives are full of unjustified justifications. I can't hardly find nobody, mama or man, who get up every morning to pray on the prayer line. Well, why did that stop you from praying all together? Oh no, I've been to noonday prayer when I was young. The ministers that had the night shift wanted to still be a part of the ministry, so they dedicated a lot of time, they lunch times, and they would be in the rotation. Only Minister Green for nobody to care or show up. Nigga, please. I said, y'all know I'm just gonna be me. Please. They want me at service all weekend and all these rehearsals. Ain't nobody going to no noonday prayer, even if I got time to do it. And you know what that did? So this ain't about the person complaining. It's about the collateral damage. What they did was it eventually discouraged the people that ministered or prayed at noonday prayer. Well, you know, the enemy gets his way. You know why? Ain't nobody willing to do noonday prayer no more. And everybody that need intercessory at noonday now ain't got nobody interceding on their behalf. Collateral damage. Because we feel justified by stuff that you can't justify in Scripture. Ain't nobody telling you not to fall out just because you don't see nobody around you being slain in the spirit. Go ahead on and be slain if that's what he's calling you to do. Now, it ain't not in those particular words. But y'all know what I mean. If he want to give you a vision and take you into an out-of-body experience, you're not justified by not going to your own personal patmos just because most of the people that you're around don't believe in fellowship in that way no more. When did everybody that you were around have anything to do with your individual call? Right. Right. Well, I'm going to make sure that I go and join a church where don't nobody sweat. <laughs> we're almost at three so that I can close. Hardly anybody practices these tenets anymore. You begin to operate under these notions while at the same time, nobody can take away your first Peter chapter two, verse nine from you. Meaning that you still swear that you're of the same group of peculiar people that Peter the Apostle was addressing in his first letter. Guess what? The last time I checked, peculiar was synonymous with different. Not the same as everyone else. So either you're going to be peculiar or you're not. It's amazing how in theory we can be called peculiar when we read the scripture, but none of your life of fruit measures up with that. You can't be both. You, you can't serve two masters. That's what's online. That's why online seems so narcissistic. Positive vibes are, girl, I'm bad. Man, bro, I'm a 10. Look like everybody else. Got the same that eyelashes that can sweep the floor. Oh, Lord, I might as well just stay in trouble once I'm in there. Don't can't look like an ice cream cone. Got so many colors on your head. None of it indigenous. Thank you, Secretary Diggs, for the natural. Thank you, sister. I, I appreciate you. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I, I, I love it because and y'all listen. Don't don't listen to me. Do whatever you want to do. Ain't nobody put all of the colors of Baskin Robbins in your head. None of them is natural. All I'm saying is, you claiming that that's peculiar. You look like everybody else that you watched in Madame uh, Noir. Jed in Essex, you look just like who you claim is inspiring you. But you're peculiar with the same Air Force Ones, crisp and white on. 
which are peculiar, chasing after the same G-Wagon that means status online to everybody else. No, you're not. You're a peculiar people. He may not choose to give you a wagon while you're alive and you can save a whole nation. That's the trade-off. Oh, I better get done. Let me do a time check, Billy. Two minutes. I think I can finish. I'm in the 50s and I'm supposed to be at 60. However, many of us, myself included in times past, feel that being peculiar has not paid off. He's given me the exact truth. He's given us breakdowns after breakdowns, knowledge, insight, the right way, continuing to reveal this is what really happened. Look at where it's gotten me. That's what I was telling me. I told y'all y'all wasn't by y'all self. Why don't I, Minister Chris, just say, ah, hey. Oh, 
was different than the ancient Arab proverb. And this was true in the case of David seeking shelter from King Saul among the Philistines. It will never be justified to withhold the truth and light from folks we want to attach ourselves to because we've got other plans and ulterior motives for them. On a daily basis, almost every day, you see them saying or doing something that's going in the wrong direction. But because it's pain in you, you don't say nothing. Because in some kind of way it's benefiting you, you don't, you don't call it on the carpet, or it may put your standing with them in jeopardy. Yeah, you can't dwell among the ignorant and leave them ignorant and continue to make it. It will never be justifiable to withhold the truth. The Most High has called us to seek Him first and to be lights first before any personal agendas. First before any personal agendas. First before any personal agendas. Y'all who think I'm a hypocrite, let me just use my word self for example. I'm not throwing off at, any, at anyone, particularly I'm throwing off at all of y'all. We got people that went on to be happy and to be married and y'all struggling. Can I teach? Y'all struggling to stay with one another. Sister man, let me just go old school, Janae. Belong to Shalai, no shit, to Christ Fellowship for two years before we even thought about getting married. Why are y'all putting the cart before the horse? Right. Well, I hear you, brother, but it's too late now because I'm. You gotta stop running from being a fugitive and listen to what the Spirit is saying now. You gotta stop pointing the finger and see what you can do about yourself. Somebody else may never change. Are you? Do, do y'all remember Wednesday? Do you want your foundational floor to be righteous? Or is only contingent upon if the person I'm looking at changes too? I get it because I've been there. I, I desperately want to be what God called me to be. But you did that to Sister Man? Yes, I'll admit it if y'all want. But I want joy to change to be more amicable to the things that I want. So I really want to hold out my change in hopes that she changes. It will never be guaranteed. Her change is up to her. Yeah, thank you for saying one or two amens because it's the truth. Do you want to be right or not? Go ahead and say no. If that, I said it enough. I'm not going to say it one more time. Can I say it one more time, uh, uh, Uncle Billy? If that nigga ain't changing, I know. No, but then, then maybe you can get help then because at least now you ain't acting like that you're still peculiar. Because that's the common response. You change, I change. How often does that work anyway, though? How often does when that person actually seem like they kind of drifting to see it your way? Now I'm over, y'all forgive me. I tried. I'm about to, I'm, I'm, I got like three more sentences to read, or lines or whatever like that. But I got to lean in on this point because this is important. How often has our choice been humility rather than passive aggression? Yeah, baby, I'm glad you're kissing me now and everything like that because you know you weren't trying to kiss me before. Oh, so now it's okay. What well, now that y'all back on speaking terms to, to throw darts? Do you know how much it had to take for somebody maybe to humble to start compromising to come out of an argumentative state? I'm talking to all of y'all that's in homes. Do you know how much it had to take for a person to humble to say, you know what, you weren't all wrong in what your point was? Right. right. Yeah. Thank you, baby. Thank you for seeing it a little bit my way. I don't know what was going to happen to you if you didn't. Now, let me say, would you have still said that when they wasn't talking to you? Ooh, y'all, I didn't, Chris, I knew I wasn't the only shady person. Ooh, y'all shady? What did you just say to me? Oh, here we go again. No, don't say here we go again. You, you got a shot when somebody was trying to make peace with you. Let me give y'all some advice. Take the peace. Vengeance is his. He'll repay. If somebody's completely wrong in your relationship and you're young with them, I'm not suggesting that you hold your breath, but just wait. He'll show them. Let me tell y'all something. Can I say this? I know. I'm sorry if y'all had to leave online. Go back and finish the rest of the message. You'll be okay. That don't mean I'm going to preach for another half hour. But let me say this. Beloved, I know people right now that still seek counsel from me, I'm not afraid to say, that are in the belly of the Leviathan. But here's the key, Mark. God won't release them because we were supposed to learn from Jonah. 
That's a word. I'm talking about in literal life circumstances, they're in the belly of the whale, my woman, right now, pleading for a way out. You know what? He won't let them go because they still don't see the problem with money in the first place. And yeah, that's why they're there. And yeah, some of y'all today, that's why you're there, because you're running. Despite the fact that it ain't going to help, Cousin Billy, give me something so that I can close on a melodic note. He's calling us to seek him first. One of the reasons why things have gone ornery in our lives and so wrong with particular people in relationships in times past is because we were called to be witnesses to folks first and foremost, and that is not where we placed first. We engage with human beings based upon what we wanted and not what he imparted into us to give them first. It's always, no matter how long it takes, going in the same way when you do things that way. We engage in our interactions with others in the manner that we thought would best benefit us because we did not trust in the Most High's plan for us for whatever reason. This would never work out well. Not unless we stop walking amiss or out of order and restore the principles of his plan for us in everything we do. No purpose believer is going to see his face one day in peace without fully trusting him and in his process. Stand on your feet. I'm going to say that again. No purpose believer is going to see his face one day in peace without fully trusting him this process. Some of us don't trust him. I vow we gotta trust him, darling. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it seems like. No matter how long it seems like it's taking. We gotta trust him. He has our best interest in mind. He knows what's best for us. Help is coming. I promise you it is. But the enemy is tricking us out of our birthright because we really don't trust what he said he's going to do. Now let me disclose this and I'm going to pray. The devil is telling some of y'all this was a very, very articulate, little long way of him being like his father in times past for him trying to exercise and minister control. This isn't control or someone attempting to control you, beloved, because this message was personal. I'm not looking for a collective effect. Oh, it ain't gonna be nowhere to sit Wednesday in Bible study. No, this was personal. And I believe y'all know. A little something in this message hit everybody. Because in writing it with an intent to minister to y'all, I didn't I couldn't escape it from what it was saying to me. This isn't control. It's for every individual and to every individual for your individual path. Stop acting like a petulant child. Well, I don't like it, stop it. Well, I, I want to be encouraged, I work hard, and I struggle all way, and I don't feel well, I want to be encouraged when I come at you, stop it. You're a peculiar people. Y'all the folk, hold out your hand. You're the people who received the assignment. Stop acting like somebody's smacking their hand. The world, in many regards, in its current condition, and is in its current condition due to the collateral damage brought on by the disobedience of rogue members of Christ's body that want to escape the Tarshish rather than do what he said to them. Many men lost their lives, last line, in the book of Joshua, chapter 7 simply because Achan listen, knew the prophecy and the promise to the Israelites. I'm going to give you a land that's going to be flowing with milk and honey. He knew that. It was their inspiration through 40 years in the wilderness. Saw what happened to Moses. Saw the leadership of Joshua. Began to see the unveiling, Secretary Davis, of what the Most High had promised. 
Greta Sister Davis, Sister Leela, didn't trust it. And watch this. Stole in a place that was already given to him. Stuff, Sister Janine, had already belonged to him and his family. If y'all don't believe in collateral damage, the response, Mama Womack, you know the law, you understand scripture, the response of the Most High to Joshua. Joshua heard that his troops had died. So what is war? No, 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 no. Y'all don't understand scripture. This was God's army. Mm -hmm. Vanessa, nobody died. So Joshua heard word that the battalion he sent out to spy the land took losses. He tore his clothes, scripture said, Mark. So what is going on? Come to find out one single soldier stole what they just had to claim catalog and then it had to be redistributed to the Israelites because it was already theirs. Christ said, Brother Unc Billy, in order to vanquish this spirit, because fugitive spirits are contagious, that's why I had to teach this. In order to vanquish this spirit, you need to blot out his bloodline from the earth. Well, I'm not going to never front about how violent scripture is. The Holy Ghost was trying to save Israel. Because so many of the rest of y'all see one another running and y'all getting inspired by running. Y'all starting to collaborate and group together and join in with runners one towards another. This thing had to be put to a stop today. So he said, kill Akon's entire bloodline. Divine, the ba Lady Joy, the baby didn't do nothing. But I can't run the risk of your child coming up with the same spirit as you. May not have been comfortable today. But y'all know a chip of man is not lying. It was necessary. We have created collateral damage. Some of y'all have sat back and watched your best friends from the world. There's no problem with having a friend in the world. Your schoolmates destroy themselves. Walk literally into brick walls and you didn't do nothing even as much as witness to them. And you know who you are today. There's collateral damage in the world because of his church. So my final word before prayer is to tell you to stop. You know what you're going to do, do you? I'm available for counsel, but y'all don't need to hear me up in counsel and tell all this. You know what you need to do. I'm not even trying to say that y'all need to change your relationships. Just do what he told you to do in them.